Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and welcome back again to a ship story video. Today we're going to talk about a ship we all know, a ship we all love and a ship we all like. The story of the White Star Liner, the MV Georgic. So uh, this is going to be a pretty long video, so sit back, relax, grab a drink and uh, let's begin. Now as we all know, she was owned by the White Star Line, for now at least. And um, the chain that changed later, of course, and she was also, of course, built by the shipbuilders Holland and Wolf in uh, Belfast. She was also the younger uh, sister of MV Britannic, so uh, that's that. And in design, the Georgic was essentially a slightly larger version of her earlier sister ship Britannic, having a gross tonnage of 27 759 compared with Britannic's uh, 26, 943 uh, gross tonnage. Georgic differed in appearance from Britannic in that the forward part of her superstructure and bridge was rounded instead of straight, and the front part of her promenade deck was covered. Like Britannic, Georgic had two short stummy funnels, the forward one of which was, dummy, was a dummy which housed the radio room and the engineer's smoke room. Georgic's power plant was identical of, to that of her sister, consisting of two 10-cylinder four-stroke double-acting diesel engines, designed by Burmeister and Wayne. At the time, these were the largest and most powerful engines of her type constructed. They were coupled to two propellers and could produce 20 thousand brake horsepower. These could propel the ship at the design service speed of 18 knots, although she often averaged 18 and a half knots in service. Georgic's interiors were decorated in the popular Art Deco style, which differed from those of Britannic, which were decorated in various period styles, which had been popular in the 1920s. Georgic's passenger capacities were given as 479 cabin class, 500, 557 tourist class, and 506 third class. In addition to passenger accommodation, Georgic had also some refrigerated cargo, cargo capacity in two of her holds. Her hull was divided into eight into eight holds by 12 main bulkheads. Construction began in July 1929 and she was launched on 12, ne 12, ne no 12 November 1931 and after fitting out commenced her sea trials on 4 June 1932 after which she was ready for service. And now we shall move on to her early life. Georgic started her maiden voyage on 25 June 1932. She was built for the Liverpool-New York route and ran in tandem with Britannic. In, in early 1933, she replaced the aging RMS Olympic on the Southampton-New York route for a brief time whilst the Olympic was being overhauled. Although not the largest or fastest liners of their time, Georgic and Britannic proved popular and were in the early 1930s the most profitable ships in the White Star Line fleet, partly due to their low running cost and more affordable ticket prices compared to the traditional steamships. They helped keep the company afloat financially during the Great Depression. On 10 May 1934, whilst White Star Line merged with its old rival the Cunard Line and the ship became part of the fleet of the newly mangled Cunard White Star Line. Both ships however retained the White Star livery and house flag but with addition, with addition of the Cunard house flag. The following, the following year Georgic and Britannic were transferred to the London, Le Havre, Southampton New York route and the Georgic commenced service on this route on 3 May 1935. 
making Georgic the largest ship to sail up the River Thames and use the port of London. She continued to serve this route until the outbreak of World War II in 1939. On the outbreak of war, Georgic was not immediately commandeered, but was instead transferred back to the, Lon to the Liverpool to New York route in September 1939 and made five round trips before being requisitioned for trooping duties on 11 March 1940. And now we move to the uh, third part of the story and that's of course World War II. In April 1940, Georgic was hastily converted into a troop ship with the capacity of 3000 troops. In May that year, she insisted in the evacuation of British troops from the failed Norwegian campaign from the port of Narvik, and in June assisted in Operation Rail, evacuating troops from the French ports of Brest and Saint-Nazaire. At, at the latter, the troopship Lancastria was bombed and sunk on 17 June, with the loss of at least 2,888 lives. Between July and September 1940, 1940, she sailed to Iceland and then to Halifax, Nova Scotia to transport Canadian soldiers. Georgic then made a, very, made a variety of journeys from Liverpool and Glasgow to the Middle East via the Cape, along with journeys between Liverpool, New York and Canada. Between May 1940 and July 1941, Georgic transported around 25,000 troops, mostly to the Middle East. On one voyage, something happened though to the vessel. On 22 May 1941, Georgic left Glasgow under the command of Captain A.J. Gregg with the, with the 50th Northumbrian Infantry Division bound for Port Tuwick in the Gulf of the Suez via the Cape. She was part of a convoy which had to be left almost unprotected due to the hunt for the German battleship Bismarck, but arrived safely on 7 July and the troops on board were disembarked. One week later, on 14 July 1941, while she was anchored off port, Tuwick, waiting to embark 800 Italian detainees, German aircraft sweeping the waterway for targets spotted her and proceeded to attack. After several misses, the ship was hit by two bombs. The first one glanced off the side and exploded in the water, causing considerable damage to the ship's hull near number four hold. Causing, causing heavy flooding in the second in the second one hit the aft of the boat deck and penetrated five decks and, ex and exploded in a lift shaft causing extensive, extensive damage to the number five hold. This started a fire a fire which ignited fuel from ignited fuel oil ruptured from the fuel tanks. The fire ignited ammunition stored in the aft holds, causing an explosion, which engulfed the entire rear end of the ship in flames. Despite the heavy damage, the ship's engineers were still able to start the engines and Captain Greg was able to maneuver the blazing ship into, onto a reef in the middle of the Suez Bay in order to beach it so it wouldn't block the, bus, the busy canal. While doing this, Georgie collided with another ship, the HMS Glenlearn, which resulted in Georgie's storm stem being badly twisted. By this stage, the flames had spread to the upper decks as she started to sink. The order was given to abandon ship and all on board managed to escape via the lifeboats. The Georgic slowly settled by the stern into the shallow reef 
and was left to burn out over the next two days, by which time the ship was half submerged. The engine room flooded and the superstructure gutted by the fire, was blackened and a twisted shell. Luckily, she got a second chance at life. And that is then uh, part four of the story, a second chance at life. On 14 September, the damage to Georgic was assessed it, and it was decided that the ship was self salvageable, as the basic hull structure and the machinery were still mostly intact. Georgic then underwent a lengthy salvage and refurbishment operation, which took a total of three years, in which the historian Richard de Keberech described as one of the greatest feats in the history of salvage. During October, the ship had its holes and openings temporarily plugged, and then the water was pumped out to refloat the vessel. In December, Georgic now flowed and at an anchorage had, it, had its temporarily plugs replaced by more permanent cement boxes to make the vessel seaworthy. As Georgic had no power, light or accommodation, she had to be towed as an abandoned hulk. As no tugs were available, two British cargo ships, the Clan Campbell and the City of Sydney, were al allocated to the task. Beginning on 29 December, they first towed Georgic to Port Sudan, taking 13 days. Here, Georgic underwent further repairs, lasting 8 weeks to make her seaworthy for the longer voyage to Karichi. On 5 March 1942, Georgic left Port Sudan under the tow of the Harrison's Line recorder and the tug St. Sampson, which later proved to be too small for the task and had to slip after one day. On the 8th day, they were joined by another tug. Pauline Muller and the British steamer Harshenfield, who together successfully brought Georgic into Karishi on 31 March. Here it was decided that the Georgic would undergo essential repairs, which did not require dry docking. Taking eight months to complete with limited resources. Her engines and generators were restored to working order and her stem was strengthened, and, and some crew accommodation was rebuilt on board. In December 1942, Georgic left Karichi on her own power for Bombay, her engines, man her engines managing a speed of 11 knots. At Bombay she was dry docked and the damage to her hull repaired. Her machinery was also given a further overhaul. Georgic then left Bombay for the UK on 20 January 1943, arriving at Liverpool on 1 March. Having completed the entire journey, unescorted at an average speed of 15 knots. A survey of the ship was then carried out by the Admiralty and the Ministry of War Transport and the decision was made to send the ship back to Holland and Wolf in Belfast to be completely rebuilt into a troop ship. During the rebuild, over 5,000 tons of fire gutted steel were removed from the Georgic, and her upper decks and superstructure were completely rebuilt. She emerged from her rebuild after 19 months in December 1944 with a considerably changed appearance. Her forward funnel and mainmast were removed and the foremast shortened to a stump. Following the rebuild, Georgic became a government-owned ship, with her ownership transferred to the Ministry of War Transport. Cunard Whitestein, Cunard Whitestein, Cunard, Cunard White Star, however, managed the ship on their behalf. And now we move to part 5 and the final part of the story, her later life and her end. On 17 December 1944, Georgic resumed service as a, as a troop transport between Italy, the Middle East and India. After the war ended in 1945, 
She spent the next three years repatriating troops, civilians and prisoners of war. By 1948, with trooping requirements falling off and the need for more ships to cater for the demand of immigrants to Australia and New Zealand, the Ministry of Transport decided to restore Georgic for civilian service, with the requirement that she could be converted again for trooping duties if the need arose. In September 1948, Georgic was sent to the Palmer's Yard on the Tyne to be refitted as an immigrant ship with a single class accommodation of, one, of 1,962 passengers. Georgic had her white star colors restored in the refit. However, she was by now very much an Alturian vessel and her interiors were not restored to their pre-war luxury standards. Between January 1949 and October 1953, Georgic was operated on the UK-Australia Immigrant Service, operated by Cunard but charted by the Australian government. During the, during the summer high seasons from 1950 to 1954, Cunard also charted Georgic from the MOT for some journeys from Liverpool or Southampton to New York in concert with her sister ship Britannic to meet additional demand. Georgic was charted for six round transatlantic voyages during 1950 and seven round voyages per season during 1951 and 1954. From November 1953 to April 1955, Georgic was again used for trooping duties, as she was commissioned to carry Commonwealth troops returned from the Korean War. Although, in between this, she made her last seven round voyages from Southampton to New York, chartered by Cunard during the 1954 high season. In January 1955, the MOT announced that Georgic would be withdrawn from service and put up for sale by August of that year. By this stage, by this stage Georgic's war scared machinery was proving troublesome. The MOT did not offer to transfer Georgic back to Cunard. Did, wait, the MOT did offer to transfer Georgic back to Cunard, but they declined. However, she was withdrawn from sale when she was charted by the Australian government for one more season on the immigrant run. She made her last voyage to Australia in August that year. Georgic's final voyage was from Hong Kong to Liverpool in November 1955, carrying 800 troops when she arrived on 19 November. She was withdrawn from service and the Georgic was finally laid up at Kames Bay, the Isle of Buse, pending disposal and then sold for scrap in January 1956. The following month, Georgic arrived at Fast Lane for a breaking up. Scrapping of the Georgic was completed by late 1956. And that is the end of this video. Did you enjoy yourselves? I hope you did. And I hope you learned something from this magnificent liner, also known as the Georgic. Um, I really liked making this video. Um, I learned so much about her during the script. So again, I hope you learned something as well. Um, I quickly want to thank also again the new subscribers who have subscribed to my channel these last days. It really means a lot. Um, like I always say, uh, the little boy a few years ago could have, could have never imagined that I would already have these people liking my content. Um, but of course, if you have friends or uh, yes, friends who like ships or ocean liners, uh, please show them my channel. We are now trying to reach the 300 sub and I know we can do it together. Um, and also please leave in the comments what you thought of this video. 
and maybe what ship I should do next. And uh, with that out of the way guys, have a good night or day wherever you are and we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye.